siblings of narcissists, psychopaths, or sociopaths. What's your experience? It's interesting really. My mom died recently. When I called my sister to come down the day before she died she said I thought she was going to die today. I'm not disappointed, but I can't keep missing work. The next day I called her to come to the hospital again as the doctor, and I made the decision to take her off the ventilator. On the phone she said well, can we pull out the tube as soon as I get there, because I have plans tonight. She also proceeded to ask me for rent money that day, as I also live with her. The things they say and don't realize how messed up it is is really baffling. My condolences. Damn. I feel bad every day about not being there for the moment my dad passed. I remember telling my mom I can't watch it on the phone and feeling like such a piece of <laughs> But hearing about people like this make me realize I had a more normal reaction than that at least. My daughter was hit by a drunk driver when she was 12 and nearly died. She was in a coma for 2 weeks and I was there all day every day except to go home to shower and change. My sister decided that when I was at the hospital was the perfect time for her and her druggy girlfriend to jimmy the sliding door off the track, break in and steal everything she could find, jewelry, my camera, and yes, my daughter's piggy bank. The stole the piggy bank from a comatose kid. I'm so sorry. I hope that your daughter is doing better now and that your terrible sister has left you all alone. Thank you. That was many years ago and my daughter survived and is a mom herself now. Thankfully she doesn't really remember much of the accident or aftermath. The sister is still around when she isn't in jail. She lives with my mother who refuses to force her to deal with her because enabling her has gotten us so far but luckily I only have to deal with her when I visit mom. Or I get that she's done something stupid, or I cannot deal with her anymore calls. My sister has never been diagnosed with narcissism or a personality disorder other than OCD, but when we were younger she often enjoyed telling people, before I met them, that I had a difficult relationship with the truth, so that they wouldn't want to be around me. I had the reputation of a liar, and no friends for most of my preteen years, and she was popular in our homeschool group, until she left and got into high school. After she left, I still didn't have friends, but neither did she, and she blamed me for it during her frequent temper tantrums. She would throw things, scream, cry, and threaten me with kitchen knives on a pretty regular basis. All of a sudden, the year that I turned 17, and she turned 21, the tantrums stopped, and she got engaged. He moved in with us, the tantrums started again, and for once I wasn't the target. The worst fight there had happened when she caught him looking at a photo of a bikini model, which she considered cheating. She hit him full force with an open palm, and when our mum saw, she threatened to kick her out if she hit him again. They got married, moved out, and divorced within a year of him enlisting in the army. He had to get away, somewhere with less violence. He heard Afghanistan was nicer than her place. When she threw a cup of hot tea at my face because I refused to show her something on the computer. Or the time when she yelled at me for over an hour because I was really sick and had thrown up all over the bathroom sink. The same bathroom she had just cleaned. I stopped speaking with her over 7 years ago. My sister did something similar. She pulled extremely hot refried beans out of the microwave, a big bowl, and poured it on me. I was probably 6 and she was 10. I got massive burns from that. Another time we were arguing over who was going to ride our shared bike, and she got so mad she shoved the handlebar in my face, and it knocked my two front teeth. I had to get metal caps over top of them, and was so embarrassed. Holy hell that's terrible. Like nasty magma. Brother believes the world is his oyster, and that friends and family and loved ones are his to control and exploit. He told a girl they are dating, and she should buy him a car and take him out for dinner. Brother has also tried to burn down our childhood home thrice because mom didn't give him the things he wanted, we were poor, and he knew that, but he honestly believes that he gets what he wants because that's how it should be. He also tried to sell my car, he still hounds me for the money he should have gotten if he sold it. Every story was progressively worse than the last holy sh I don't know, I feel like trying to burn down the family home three different times is kinda worse than selling someone else's car. 
you know it's the real deal when the word thrice gets involved. My brother was one of those grandiose narcissists. A typical example of his everyday behavior was the time he purchased a can of an uncommon brand of cola and then bragged for days about it, as though he had discovered the cure for cancer or something, all because it wasn't Pepsi or Coke, those were for common people. My mom would hang on his every word. She pretty much lived vicariously through him, and he could do no wrong in her eyes. He could act like a jerk towards me, and she would make excuses for him, no matter how awful it was. However, once when he didn't like the birthday gift I have him, she acted like I had committed a crime. Our parents were really against drugs. However when my brother decided to grow marijuana in our house our mom was enthusiastically supportive of it. However, a few years later, when I smoked pot and my parents found out, well suddenly I was the one who ruined Christmas for the family. My brother was living 3000 kilometers away when she became gravely ill. I phoned him and told him he needed to get out here pronto if he wanted to say goodbye. The best he could manage was to come out a week later. She hung on for that week waiting for him to show up. When I would visit her at the hospital and say I'm here mom she would respond with I want your brother. She instructed the hospital staff to not tell me anything so when I would ask how she was doing I would get a that's private confidential information type of response. Meanwhile, my brother would phone the hospital daily and they would tell him everything about her care, from the medications she was on, her blood work levels, her treatment options, it was pretty much palliative by that point, and all that. I could not even get a she slept well last night from the nurses, but he could tell me her blood oxygen levels from 3000 kilometers away. Every day that I talked to him, I would ask him if could not come out sooner. But he could never get away from work, even though he was one of the highest ranking people at his job. I took care of the house while she was in the hospital. I cleaned up all the diarrhea, did her laundry, took care of the bills, but wasn't a welcome visitor to her bedside. When he finally did show up he visited her for a short while, then said let's go for lunch to me. She passed away as soon as we stepped out of the hospital. She hung on just to hear him say hello. Golden Child Syndrome. Your mom was the main problem. Your brother was the byproduct. When I was 10, my mom put a lock on my door because my brother started threatening to kill me and my mom in the night. When I was 14, he fixated on my mom and threatened to burn down our house, shoot my whole family and steal all the valuables and drive away. That same year, he was 17, he took our car and ran away from home for 2 weeks. We ended up calling the police on him. When he came home, the police decided that it would be best if he lived somewhere else so he did. As we were cleaning out his room we found hundreds of knives, a handgun, lighter fluid, gasoline and lighters. He sounds lovely. I bet he would just love baking. <coughs> Lived an entire lifetime not being aware that it isn't normal to run to your bedroom and hide when dad gets home. That it isn't normal to be scared of your parents reactions to, well, anything. Becoming a mom and having little kids that I just looked at and knew. I could never beat them up for picking a flower or shame them for not knowing how to hang a shelf or throw grubs at them if they come outside or throw potato salad at them if they say they don't want any, yeah. It wasn't normal and only just now am I realizing all of that. I know that pain, except it was my mom. Now that I'm an adult with a life of my own, I understand that my mom is just a product of her own upbringing. My grandma was abusive to her, but it doesn't excuse the fact that she copied her upbringing and pasted it to become my upbringing. Don't have kids of my own yet, but my friend's kids are like my nephews and nieces ages range from on the way to 6, and they are such amazing kids. My mom would yell at me for several minutes and tell me I don't amount to sh because I'd do something like drop food out of the plate. These kids have dropped milk, on accident, of course, and of course I don't get mad at them. I just get flashbacks of getting beaten up for it and wonder why the f did my mom ever have kids. I was playing with a suitcase while watching TV. I was small enough to fit myself in it. My brother, nearly four and a half years older than me, saw what I was doing and asked to zip me up in it. After already having learned to never trust him, I asked mom to watch us to make sure he didn't do anything stupid. He zipped me up inside the suitcase and started carrying it in a shuffle step. Thump. 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 
I heard the sliding door to the enclosed patio open. Mom started screaming, and I could hear her slapping my brother repeatedly. The suitcase fell over onto its side with me still in it. I managed to pry open the zippers from the inside and got myself out of the suitcase as quickly as possible. Mom was still slapping at my brother, screaming why. I was two feet away from being dumped inside a suitcase into the family hot tub. He laughed and said that I would have floated, what's the big deal? So, yeah, that's what it was like growing up with a sociopath. That's terrifying. I'm glad you knew to have your mom nearby or else he could have drowned you. It's always difficult to share my problems with them because they also had that same problem at some stage of their life and it was much harder for them than that is for me apparently. My sister is like that. She once told me that I apparently don't remember our childhood very well. Bitch, I remember the times you ran the gas tank to zero, typically got our brother to pay for it, the sh she talked my freaking brother into. He was spoiled, so he didn't mind, and maneuvered a situation in which my father slammed me into a wall and screamed at me to fill the damn tank. I remembered a mother who was willing to have me kicked out of the house for sh you started suddenly bork at punishing you when I showed her the proof, princess probably didn't mean to do it. Yeah, that it totally can happen on accident, and it would have been so out of character for you. I won't say growing up as my father's kid was easy, but for that situation, she had it easy. I should have taken the sociopath route. Damn did me, and you share a sister all mayo. The only difference I have from your story is we were living with my grandparents cause our mom was bad and I actually got kicked out. Like damn really shows you where you stand, when they can do no wrong, and even if you do prove you're the victim you still have to pay. Brother was doted on as a child, because he was gifted at basketball. Literally had no consequences growing up, and could do whatever he wanted. Treated me and our parents like absolute crap, and they still doted on him, while I would get the belt for the most benign and asinine stuff. My brother's life is absolute crap right now. He has no sense of self-worth and just gets handouts from my parents. He is in his late 30s and my parents are giving him money for rent and food. He wants everyone to feel sorry for him and expects everything to be handed to him. He can't do anything on his own and guilt trips and manipulates my parents into doing whatever it is he needs doing for him or just giving him extra funds. He has no incentive to change and is content playing video games all day while my parents just enable his lifestyle. At holidays he just talks down to me and tries to make me feel bad about how difficult his life is. I could care less about him and have no desire to talk to him until he makes some serious changes in his lifestyle and life choices. The best revenge is living well. It's a wonderful expression. I just don't know how true it is. You don't see it turning up in a lot of opera plots. Ludwig, maddened by the poisoning of his entire family, wreaks vengeance on Gunther in the third act by living well. My sister has dialed down her act a bit, after we have all spent a few years out of our aging NPD asshole father's house. I mostly remember a massive sense of entitlement that simply made no logical sense and would require a great deal of cognitive dissonance to explain. Like, she would never loan me things, CDs, EXC, but had no problem walking straight into my room, in front of my face, to take a bottle of body lotion to use on herself. She seemed to have no remorse for what her behavior did to others, so long as she got what she wanted out of the deal. Sometimes, she would just do and say mean and spiteful things for no reason. I talked to her from time to time. While is less of a self-involved sociopath, she still is insufferably self-righteous. Ugh my sister was like that. I was never allowed to borrow her clothes, even when I asked, but she would go to my closet and take whatever she wanted. I ended up having a specific hanger for every shirt I owned. I could look at my closet and know what was missing by the empty hanger 